What's going on, everybody? This is Jeff with Living in Arizona, and today we're going to talk about natural disasters in Arizona because of uh, the fires that are taking place and also the conversation that keeps coming up with water across Arizona. So we're going to have the conversation, and I'm going to hopefully uh, dispel some rumors and also uh, help get you guys the information you need to make the decision. Because people are seeing these big fires burning in Tucson. They're seeing the big fire burn in Phoenix, and they saw it last year, and they see it uh, every year, and they're kind of like, oh, I don't know if I want to move to Arizona because I don't know if I want to get burned down. It was kind of like what you saw with the Malibu fires in L.A., like these apocalyptic kind of settings. And uh, so I just wanted to give you guys the information you need to know about that, flash floods and uh, the haboobs, the dust storms, stuff like this. So if you're excited about this video, crush up the likes. Thanks to the four people who already did so. I did make an enhanced video about this subject on my other channel when it comes to preparing for all these things, because I think in this day and age, people are more uh, interested in becoming a prepper. They want to be prepared. They don't like getting caught in a situation where they can't buy toilet paper or they can't buy bleach or hand sanitizer or this and that. So that's why these videos are kind of more popular than they were before, because people are thinking about like, well, I don't know if I want to get caught with no food in the, in the house in the event of something happening. So I did put a link in the description. That's to my other channel. Uh, Next Global News. And then on my other channel, Urban J, I did a video about um, EMP, electromagnetic pulse uh, stuff that you guys need to know about that. And people are kind of like, hey, that's a tinfoil hat theory. Well, you'd be surprised. I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to get into trying to convince you that you need to prepare for things, but that's why these kind of videos keep coming up. So anyways, here we go. We're going to talk about this. So what are the natural disasters that occur in Arizona? Uh, so you have natural disaster occurrences, you have a haboob, you have flash floods. Believe it or not, this conversation has even come up about some of these volcanoes that are supposedly extinct. Uh, we have had landslides and debris flows. Uh, we do get severe weather with monsoons where, you know, your backyard can get a microburst and then so through some of these other uh, monsoon storms can come tornadoes, believe it or not. And, you know, it's interesting because one of these uh, websites out here, uh, K, K now, which I believe is Northern Arizona, they say Arizona is one of the country's most at risk states due to natural disaster, because it's kind of interesting because when I was a kid, I grew up always thinking, man, of all the, of all these states and all the things I saw in the news, Arizona seemed kind of immune to most of it. Sure. We got wildfires, but it didn't, it didn't get to a point where I really thought that we were like one of the most dangerous states for that, because, you know, you'd see what happens in Florida every single year with hurricanes. You see what happens in the Gulf of Mexico with the hurricanes. And then, you know, you see earthquakes in L.A. and Cascadia fault line over in, um, you know, uh, Oregon and in Washington, where they say that at some point there's going to be a mega tsunami earthquake. So, you know, you, you get all these conversations. And I also live in Hawaii where they do have active volcanoes. They do have tsunami warnings. Uh, they do have all these different things that you got to kind of be on the lookout for down there, even earthquakes. But I never really thought Arizona was one of the most at-risk at states. But I guess when you consider all things, I guess you could say that. I mean, but it, 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 then it becomes kind of like, wow, you're really living in fear. And this is not about living in fear. But uh, just to give you an update where these earthquakes can happen, we do have some seismic belts out here. But I, for one, would say that Arizona is not a state where we get earthquakes. Although we've been seeing them in Nevada, we've been seeing them in Utah, and we've even heard of them rumbling across Arizona. But for the most part, we're not really an earthquake state. Now, this idea about these volcanoes, volcanoes, have uh, they exist across Arizona. And people, for the most part, from what I understand, is they're extinct. But people have been talking about how some of the, these volcanoes might not be extinct. I don't know if they're just making it up or if they're serious. But if uh, the volcanoes are not extinct, that would be interesting. But there's some big ones up there in Flagstaff area. <coughs> there's some because Flagstaff, San Francisco Peak, that big, tall mountain out there, they say that is uh, basically a vol an extinct volcano. So that's San Francisco Peak. Uh, but some of the other areas that they say are also volcan uh have volcanic activity is like out in the White Mountains over in eastern Arizona. Nothing really too much around Phoenix that's catching their eye, although some people are saying that some of these volcanoes are. Now, when it comes to the fires, okay, let's just talk about these fires. We already talked about it on the last video about Yarnell. The, the, they made a movie about the Yarnell uh, guys. I forget what it was called. Someone dropped that name in the comments before. But 19 firefighters in uh, Prescott, from Prescott, basically, 
uh, got consumed by a fire back in 2013, and they made a video about that. It's on Netflix. You can look it up. It's Yarnell Fire in Prescott, Arizona. They have a tribute and a monument to that. But every single year, we get fires out here. Like it or love it, that's just what happens. The, Arizona, the desert is dry. It's arid. It's like a tinder, and we get fires, and we've had them burning in the superstitions just north on the way to the Beeline Highway to Payson, and there's been one that's actually been raging on Mount Lemon in Tucson for quite some time, and that's the one you guys probably keep seeing. But it's not really affecting Tucson, and it never really does affect the big cities. So if you live in the city, you're not going to really be at risk for any of the uh, fires that burn in the hills or in the mountains because the fires, they, you know, they get stopped by the roads and stuff. It's where they just have wild areas where firefighters can't get to, and those fires just take off. So we did see some fires in Cave Creek which is a town. So the more rural you are, the more exposed you could be to some of these fires. Now, when it comes to some of these other things that you may want to consider about the uh, uh, monsoon, the dust storms, these haboobs, they move fast. We actually had one about two weeks ago. So keep those in mind. Those are something to consider, but they're not the end of the world. Okay. You know, you get them, stay inside, they blow through and it's, and that's it. So it's not the end of the world. Uh, another thing that people are really concerned about is drought, water shortages. Um, this is a subject that kind of when you move here will just never really go away. Uh, what's on tap for Arizona water in 2020? Five issues to watch in 2020. This is from Phoenix New Times. They were saying groundwater, groundwater, groundwater. Last year, the Arizona Department of Water Resources updated its groundwater model and discovered that Pinal County did not have enough groundwater to meet the legal requirements for dozens of planned uh, developments. So groundwater, we have, a, we have a, a, a groundwater level underneath most of like the Apache Junction area. It's, it's the water table and it's got a, so we have a lot of groundwater here. A lot of people didn't realize that, but we do. And then we also get water from the Colorado River but because we share with California, we share with Nevada, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, all those places, and Phoenix and Tucson, uh, you know, there's only so much water the Colorado River can produce. And if the Rockies were to ever not produce a lot of water, you know, that could be a big thing. But for me, I'm like, if you live on the coast, why is your government not considering desalinization at this point? That's taking salt water and turning it into fresh drinking water. And I know it can be done because we used to do it when we were in the Navy. Our entire ship used desalinization plants. So uh, studying new sources of water, where can we get water from? Maybe even, I mean, there's tons of water that goes unused up in Canada. They can drill, a, they drill a, you know, black oil or a, what do they call it? Black gold. Why not bring down some of that blue gold, <laughs> you know, like build a pipeline. You could consider something like that. Um, obviously, you know, there's going to be a big environmental protest standing in the way of getting some, something like that done. But uh, you know, that's one idea right there too. Um, another thing that you got to keep in mind is Salt River, Verde River. That's where we get the SRP, Salt River Project. And then um, just basically figuring out other, <laughs> you know, other ways to use these streams, the Gila River system, the Little Colorado system, figuring out ideas for that kind of stuff. And so the other thing that you may want to keep on your mind is the... Uh, it's, it's called radon. Radon is the second leading cause of lung disease in the United States, something like that. I don't really know too much about it, but you might want to take a look at radon. Another thing that uh, happens during a monsoon is a flash flood. We've talked about this on other videos, but because we haven't touched on it for a while and we have new viewers, we'll kind of touch on the, uh, the idea of flash floods. But thank you to the 11 people who crushed up the likes and the 32 people who are watching, 42 people and 21 likes now. All right. So that happened fast. I do see some of your comments. Nino said, um, I, and I'll go back into uh, the, the uh, flash floods, but hurry up monsoon. Hopefully more rain than dust said snow, snow for gun. <laughs> what a name. Okay. So Nino, he says uh, a bit of an off topic question, but how hard is it for telecommunications worker from Europe to get a job from Arizona? I've been thinking about trying to move to AZ after. Uh, okay, so I'm 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 assuming you're um, trying to be what do they call those journeyman linemen uh, or something like that, like someone who goes up on the power lines. We have a lot of power lines out here, and uh, obviously with the 5G upgrade that the world is undergoing here in the United States, fifth generation wireless, 
you know, there should be some, you should be able to get a job as a journeyman lineman or even something along those lines of uh, being an electrician seems to be in demand in Arizona, actually. So I would say probably not that hard. Arizona Insider says Hot Shots 19. That's the, that's the, if you guys are wanting more information on the Yarnell fire, the, the guys who uh, fought that fire and, um, you know, there's a memorial and a tribute to those guys. Hey, what's going on, Jane? All right, so back to the idea of um, flash floods. So what? here's what it is. We have these things called washes. They're basically dry for the most part of the year, but whenever there's a big, heavy storm, the, they just – the reason they exist is because they're like – when there's water runoff, I mean, for years and years and years, they, the water just knows where to go. It knows its path, and it goes into these washes, and then that's where you get these walls of water. And when you get a, a really heavy storm – whether it be in the winter or especially in the summer where it'll be dry and you'll be, you'll be like, that's, that's a dry, that's a dry riverbed. But no, if there's a big heavy storm, be careful because there can be walls of water that, that come down that uh, riverbed. And that's the flash floods that you have to be careful of. C so says, how stable is the power grid, especially in the summer? Um, yeah. I mean, that's something that we've had to consider a couple times on this channel, talking about the Palos Verdes nuclear power plant out there in uh, Buckeye. Uh, that's our nuclear power plant. Then we have some hydrogen electric, hydroelectric that we get off Lake Mead. And then we also have some various, we have various other uh, power. What powers Phoenix? Hang on, let me see if I can get you more information. I know we use the nuclear power plant um, in, uh, it's called Palo Verde's nuclear power plant, but there may be more. Um, let's see here. What powers Phoenix? Electricity. <laughs> oh, Google, you really don't want to answer this question, do you? Nuclear, natural gas, nuclear power, and coal provided almost all of the net electricity generation in Arizona. So um, let me see if I can get how much of this is broken down. Uh, I mean, for the most part, it's Palos Verdes uh, nuclear power plant. But with a, a net summer capacity of 3,900 mill megawatts Palo, Arizona's Palo Verde nuclear generating station is the largest nuclear plant so it's the largest nuclear power plant in the country here in Phoenix uh, the largest net generator of electricity and the second largest power plant by capacity of any kind in the nation so in Arizona ranked second in the nation in electricity generation from solar energy yeah a lot of these homes have solar so if you're looking for a real solid solution go solar I mean uh, solar is something, and if you can get some sort of backup power from solar that's not attached to the grid, that would be something that I'm considering personally. So if you're really worried about power, uh, obviously when you t put power uh, solar power plants or solar power uh, panels on your roof, you're going to have to connect to the grid. But you can do it. Um, with like two or three or four panels, like say on a pergola outside or something that maybe isn't attached to your home, kind of like what you do with your RV, right? You know, when you get an RV, you have backup solar panels on your roof and that helps you when you're parked or whatever and you're not near a, you know, you don't want to just turn on your uh, generator. So solar is a real big thing out here in Arizona. If you're really worried about it, consider going solar. Uh, like I said, hydro, hydroelectric, uh, motor gasoline, natural gas, <coughs> coal. We do have a big coal power plant up in Northern Arizona near Page. Uh, I don't know if that's going to always be there, but they were talking about um, deprecating that. I, I'm not so sure if that will stay there. Hey, Damir from Bosnia. Good, right on. Um, Just Mike says, if I'm surrounded by fire and see a big cactus, then cut and get myself inside, will I be safe? <laughs> wow. Okay, that was a joke, huh? He wants to he wants to go uh, hide out in a safe or in a safe place from the fire in a cactus. C cactuses are succulents, right? They have water. You know, but uh, on a serious snow, I mean, um, if you do if you do see a fire, you know, you're more than likely going to have to evacuate. Uh, the mate says, "Let's fire up that monsoon." Yeah, monsoons also bring with it lightning, which uh, is very powerful. We get powerful lightning and thunder. I mean, you'll hear some of these uh, storms just really popping. In fact. The, the, the monsoon season that we used to get in the 80s and the 90s was a lot more intense than what we see nowadays. And one of the reasons why uh, they say Phoenix appears to be getting hotter 
is because of the concrete jung jungle. We have more pavement, asphalt, and that asphalt, when the sun hits it, it radiates. So it creates more of a, um, like a shield. But actually what causes monsoons to begin with, these monsoon storms that we get, people, some people come out here and they're like, you call that a monsoon? They're like, that's not a monsoon. Actually, these are kind of monsoons. It's just the seasons haven't been as strong. But the thing that causes monsoon energy in, in the atmosphere is heat. So when it gets really hot, that's what creates the monsoon clouds. So when it's like 105, you're not going to see monsoons. But as we get to like 110, you'll start to see the monsoon season starts to crank up. So the more hot it gets, the, the nature's way of like uh, healing itself or protecting itself from watering the plants is to uh, create monsoons, which is rain. And you'll get those. I'm excited. I mean, we'll see how much uh, monsoon activity we get this summer, but I really hope we get some. It's, it's actually one of my favorite times of the year. Tucson still gets some pretty good. And some other areas down in south, southeastern Arizona and even northern Arizona get some pretty good monsoon stuff. So if you guys are in our group and you guys take pictures of uh, monsoons, please share them in there because everyone loves to see how the monsoon season looks. Um, Snowfagun says, all the concrete and asphalt retains heat and releases it back at night so it never gets a chance to cool off. Need way, way more trees everywhere to offset some son of a gun. <laughs> yeah. VA dip. Uh, DeFanco. Hey, Jeff, just moved to Phoenix from Coachella, California, waiting for monsoons. Yeah, they, the monsoons, we're supposedly in monsoon season already here in June, but when you start seeing it getting to like 110, 111, 115, that's when the monsoons will start coming in. The one thing that happens with the monsoons is it does bring a little bit more humidity, thanks to the 30 people who crushed up the legs, by the way. So if you guys have any other questions about uh, natural disasters in Arizona, whether it be fires, uh, drought, fan, um, you know, all these different things, uh, haboobs, monsoons, ask now because I, I don't really intend to talk too much about natural disasters on other videos, but now's the time to really uh, get your concerns and get your questions out of the way. If you're just now tuning in and after this video is completed, you can drop a comment below and I'll try to uh, respond and answer you there. I did also create a Patreon for those of you who want to, uh, do that. And I said, Hey, should I put merchandise out there? What kind of things do you guys like coffee mugs? Uh, and we can make some really cool logos. And if any of you guys are artists and you guys want to help out with that, we can also have a conversation about <coughs> creating cool Arizona gear, you know, and including you guys in the, uh, in the process of creating cool Arizona gear. I mean, for me, I like, I like polyester spandex shirts cause they're lightweight like these. That's why I always wear these, but I don't necessarily like the Nike logo. But Nike's the only one who knows how to make them right. And a couple other surf brands from like, there's a sports, there's a surfing brand that I like. And there's also a uh, surfing brand that makes really good quality. I think it's called Huck. This, this sports fishing brand makes really good quality stuff, from my opinion, it's called Huck. And then also, um, I have been seeing some pretty good gear that I like that I just ordered, which I can show you guys all the stuff that I like based on my experience in traveling around and, you know, being exposed to pretty good clothes because sometimes, you know, you, you go there and they just sell cotton. It's like you go to Macy's and Dillard's and you're just like cotton, cotton, cotton. And you're like, yeah, but I don't like cotton out here in Arizona because it's hot. I mean, it makes me sweat. You know, it's like I want to wear something lightweight, like a dry fit, like this shirt right here. But they don't really make a lot of these. And um, they're kind of like rash guards. For those of you who are surfers, you know what I'm talking about. Thanks to the 33 people who crushed up the likes, but I can share it with you guys the stuff that, that I think makes the most sense for staying cool. Um, Snobros King, we are thinking about moving to Buckeye all the way from Indiana. I'm hoping that will develop very nicely in the next 10 years. Yeah, I mean, all of Phoenix is supposed to be developing and Buckeye is, is one of those areas that's developing. And if the Bill Gates Smart Project goes through out there in uh, Belmont, beyond the, the white tanks, you know, you, you should be able to be sitting pretty with that. Cheap homes out in Buckeye. I mean, that's where the cheap brand new homes are. They also have cheap homes out here in Santan Valley too. Uh, but I think Buckeye is a little bit cheaper, but you know, you get what you pay for in terms of location, right? Um, Snow for gun. Old rule of monsoon was three days in a row of dew point of 55 or over. And it's still, still a rule. They just set these new dates to sensationalize it longer. It'll begin, it'll begin beginning to mid July, like always. 
Exactly. Exactly, man. That's what it is. It's mid July. But I did check the, uh, if you guys want to know when you move out here, what app I use for my weather, I do use the weather channel app. Okay. So this is the weather channel app. If you haven't already downloaded it. Um, the thing that I like about it is it's got a daily. Oh my gosh. There you go. Kind of can see it. So download the weather channel app. If you get out here, you can also use the app that comes you know, with your phone on Apple or Android, but I like the weather channel. I actually upgraded. The reason I like the weather channel is because they give me daily. So I can go as far as like right now I can get a forecast for July 5th. Here it is uh, June 21st. And I can see where they're kind of anticipating or forecasting, but I don't see any real forecast for anything. There's a 10% chance on the 30th of June, but the weather it actually is going to heat up a little bit here on the 24th of June, the 25th of June, we're going to see 110. Um, but July, it's looking like we're going to be below 110 for the most part. And you guys all want to know, you're like, how does that 110 feel? How does that feel? Well, I'll tell you right now, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Now, 105 is not that bad. 110, 110 can be a little bit hot, but Honestly, it's not that bad so far. This summer hasn't been that bad, and we've been well over the hundreds for a long time. We've been around about 103 to 106 for the most part on average here in uh, June. No, this, it doesn't bother me at all, really. I mean, it's not like I'm out here trying to like work too hard in it, but it hasn't really bothered me. So anyways, thanks to the 35 people who crushed up the likes. 54 people are watching. We'll see you guys on the next one. Let me know in the comments if you guys have any other questions about natural disasters or any of the subjects we talked about in this video. And watch my other channel, uh, Next Global News, where I talked about that EMP and I am going to be talking about some of these things for preppers because these are the things that people really want to know about right now because they don't trust the stability in the economic climate or in the political climate that we're in. So I, I can't just talk about it on this Arizona channel because this is mostly... Arizona and I don't want to like talk about that subject on this channel, but I did set up another channel where if you're into prepping, check me out on Urban J Reviews or Next Global News where I do talk about the things that I'm doing to prep. And some of you guys are preppers. Some of you guys are like, no, thanks. I'm investing in the stock market. I'm doing it all. Actually, I've got stocks and I've got um, I'm doing prepping. I mean, I'm just doing what I got to do. You know, I'm staying working. I guess if I go into public, I got to wear a mask, you know, all that jazz. Oh, wait, I got some more comments. A bit off, kind of off topic, but I'm from a smaller town on the Central Coast, and it's becoming extremely, oh, <laughs> I will pass that next comment. Um, drive farm tractors and shoe horses, and I'm thinking about moving to Payson. You'll be fine, man. Max Brown, you'll be fine. You'll be fine out there in Payson. <laughs> all right, see you guys later.